You know, another quote from you, which is really interesting, is you, you, you've, you've made some parallels to the 60s and early 70s when one of the quotes you put was dystopia, apocalypse, revolution. And you feel like those words resonate then and now. I'm curious about your perspective on that issue. Totally. I mean, it's, it's amazing how far we haven't got since I, when I was a kid. Hmm. So I was like a, like a kid coming to consciousness. Um, you know, that age around 12 years old, when you start to look beyond what your parents are teaching you. Right. Start to get stuff on your own. You're like, I saw this by myself. No one else saw it. I'm processing it. No one served it to me. And you start looking out of the corner of your eyes and you're reading stuff in magazines that you don't quite understand, but you're reading it anyway. And your mind starts to open. And we could see, you know, just on the on the front page of the papers, I could see what some of what my parents told me that the country was going through all kinds of it's like civil war almost. Yeah. Yeah. You know? There, you know, between 1965, I think 65 and 72. There was a riot in this country every single, there were more than one riot, huge televised riot every single summer. Insane. Yeah. I mean, it's just way more than, than now, you know? Yeah. Um, so it, it looked like, and we had the Vietnam war and the kids looked crazy to the parents. The parents were like terrified because the kids looked nuts. Right. You know? It's like all these middle-class white kids that were given all this stuff in the fifties and sixties that should have been like paying their parents back and going, Oh, we're good boys. They were like freaks and running around. <laughs> that. Green hair. <laughs> right. Right. And the black community was mad. You know, they were really, really angry. Everything was going and certain factions. These people were pulling together. Middle-class mm. white kids were going in with the, with the, with the poor black kids in school. Um, sometimes fighting, sometimes not more often not. And kind of fighting against what they thought was basically a bum deal. Right. You know, forgotten, like unkept promises. So what does that sound like? Sounds like so, now. <laughs> it really does sound like now. I, I couldn't believe it. It was like, I can't believe, you know, and I went down to a, there was an anti-Trump protest, like when he first got um, voted in. Mm -hmm. My whole town went berserk and like, this can't be. So we all met in the park and went crazy. Um, and I ran into this lady I went to school with, you know, she's all growing up now. She goes, I can't. And this was a, a, a common theme that I heard after it. She goes, I can't believe I'm still protesting this, this stuff. Wow. Still. Right. Because this is like a second lifetime of protests at that yeah. point. Well, you know what's something they made a lot of progress and then the progress slowly got stolen back. Hmm. You know what I mean? You, Absolutely. You a lot of cultural progress. People got a lot closer together than when I was a kid, but on the fringes, kind of off to the sidelines, under the radar, there are people who want to basically stop being fair. They don't mm. want to be fair to everyone. And, you know, it's like the, like I, like I was saying on the record, you know, at that time, the difference I see between the two times the major difference in musically I saw was that in the last dystopia, when they were screaming apocalypse and dystopia and disaster, just like they are now, I thought the old one had a better soundtrack. Couldn't agree more, honestly. <laughs> I mean, hey, we're go talking the Beatles versus like mumble rap, you know. Yeah, I mean, you had, <laughs> yeah, you had like the Beatles, Jimi Hendrix, uh, I, mean, ins ins I mean, insane amount of music and the music was coming out and sounded like the time we lived in. Right. Right. You know what I mean? They were talking about stuff that was right in there. You just jump on it. The, the rock and rollers, rock people and music people, rhythm and blues as well. They weren't afraid to, to take from them that modern feeling, even if it was paranoid and weird and put it in their pop song. Right. I think what we got now is a bunch of people that are a little bit like, I don't know if I really want to, go too far out on the edge because of my career mm -hmm. and there's a bunch of different things going on that weren't going on back then what one is rock and roll and and that old rock spirit is now kind of grown up and it just a lot of people dependent on it for their only living and they have kids and whatever for whatever reason they didn't jump in right. on it you know like i i thought i thought when trump got elected that 
every kid in America was going to lose their shit and mm-hmm. write protest songs, but they didn't. Right. Well, that being said, do you think that could come? Do you think there could be like a creative renaissance, so to speak? It's always possible. I'm always ready, man. Cause I'm, you know, I mean, I love old music and I play the music from my childhood and I hold it dear to mine. Cause I think it's a big hard rock. And psychedelia is a, is a justifiably um, magnificent part of music. Yeah. And I always hold it, but I, I'm also a rock and roll fan. I want the next big thing. Right. You know, give it to me. Like I want to get surprised. Um, but right now, it looks as I think there's a renaissance, there could be a renaissance coming, but right now what we saw and what we're seeing is a renaissance of personality, not necessarily of art. Interesting. Right. Modern kids are their own stars to a certain effect. They don't have to look to art all the time to get the answers. They think that they're their own answers. And in a lot of ways they're mimicking stuff from the past. Like, the 20th century taught us that people on magazine covers and people with their own, their own gigs were cool. So now what does everybody have? They have their own Instagram. They have their own Facebook. They, want, right. they do their own thing. I'm like, here I am. My name is Joe Blow from Idaho. And I'm the shit. I'm the coolest guy in the world. Here's my favorite song. It's like music is still there, but it's not like front and center art anymore. It's like, here's me. Here's what I have to say. And here's what I like. It's personality based. Personality based and word based more than anything else. Right. Everybody's talking at the same time. Mm-hmm. Which so it's hard to tell like, what's noise and what's not. Absolutely. And uh, as, as you, I mean, anybody knows, um, I, I, I think art, I think most people know this, art takes a little time to grow on people. Yeah. Um, to be interpreted. And I think that while there's a lot of art being made these days from a bunch of different people, I don't think the mass of people are taking the time to interpret it one way or the other because they're so busy talking to each other. Right. Just about whatever. Because people seem like people just want to watch each other talk about, about you know. what, about whatever, which is right. not necessarily a bad thing. But if you ask me, I would say, hey, shut up a minute. <laughs> Let people create cool stuff, you know. Like Zappa, shut up and play your guitar. I think we need some of that back in the world. I, I have to agree, man, because, I mean, look at the results. If you look at the results from the, uh, the late 20th century and the early 21st century, I mean, the art, art-wise, the late 20th century has a beat. I mean, technology-wise... The 21st century has to be, but who cares about technology if it's not going to make for better art? If it's just going to make for Mm. a big argument, then I'm like, so we'll have to wait and see. That's a fantastic point, you know, and I think that's really interesting. I'm curious to see what the listeners have to say about that one. 